Hey guys, Abner Miranda here. Welcome out to the range. Today I wanted to do something for you to answer a question that was recently asked. I don't know if I want to give the, the question away or not. The full question. Um, it was about EDC, about EDC carry. You know, EDC is one thing, right? EDC is is your, you know, your sidearm. But EDC can also be what supplementary weapons you have with you. Now, I like my rifle. Um, this has been my go-to for, for some time. I recently modified it by adding a 15-inch handguard to it, but um, I like this rifle. It shoots like butter. It is, it is casually accurate. I mean, it is like, like you don't have to try kind of accurate. It is just, it's so much fun to shoot this gun. It's just, guys, it's a hoot. This gun is a hoot to shoot. But here's the problem. It's 16 inches. This is not a weapon that can be easily traveled with. For me to have this gun with me, I have to break it down, and then I have to put it in a discrete, um, it's a Blackhawk discrete case. It was actually made for the MP5. The MP5 would go in, strap in place. I've got that one for 16 inch because the upper in and of itself covers the entire expanse of that bag. For 10 threes, 11 threes, 11 fives, I've got a discrete carry case for the MP5K and it's ridiculously small. But the problem is the weapon is not readily accessible. Okay, well, you have to kind of mentally break this down. You have to think of this from a critical standpoint. What is it you're planning for? What are you packing for? So, we have now seen enough stupid going on in America and in the world to get a decent idea of what societal breakdown looks like. And what that looks like isn't a straight up free-for-all. It's a staged kind of thing. Uh, when, I, when I say staged, I mean a series of events. Um, things got ugly in America. I remember when the bougie mommies were like elbowing each other over cases of toilet paper in Costco. Okay, uh, Everywhere in America, we all experienced that. Uh, except for maybe those of you in flyover country, which God bless you, because you've always been very even-keeled people. Um, my mentor, Ken Hackathorn, lives in, I think it's, actually I'm not going to say exactly where he lives, but he lives in Idaho. And he lives in a very rural part of Idaho. And, um, and you know, Ken, Ken knows that he's blessed to be where he is, because he's very separated from the stupid that is the Northeast. And he actually used to live in Ohio, so he knows what stupid looks like. So anyways, um, for, for it to become the free-for-all that the anarchist morons are after, it, it has to have been bad for quite some time. Well, that's what this bag is about. Um, I, I've had this bag for many years. It's a, it's a U.S. Palm Gryphon EDC. This bag is unobtainium. You can't buy this bag anymore. I'm sorry, guys. It sucks. I bought it years ago. Actually, no, I'm sorry. I didn't buy this. Uh, no, they gave me this. Yeah, this was a sample. This was a, a media sample back from when I was a magazine writer. That's how old this is because I haven't written for magazines in a long time. And by the way, if you're reading gun magazines, stop. You're not reading truth. You're reading propaganda. You're reading advertising dollars being pushed. So just stop. I, bought, um, I got this bag as a sample. Um, I, I thought it was cool because it actually looks, this is actually tapered after the same exact design that is the Special Forces um, parachute. Apparently it's, they have their own design to their parachute. And this bag was designed after it. And the straps have Hypalon on the inside. This stuff is sticky. And which is why uh, guys who ride um, motorcycles like this bag because it sticks to your body. I like this bag for for a myriad reasons, the biggest of which is this back pocket. First of all, this, this section here breathes nicely against the body, but this right here allows me to have my, um, my GS-17 in it with a 27 rounder, a Magpul 27 rounder. And um, it, it houses the, the setup beautifully, uh, no complaints whatsoever. I mean, it's a nice, nice setup and it hides in the back of this bag. And because of the nature of the design, it's really hard to tell that that's even a pocket. Yeah, right? So you already know what I'm getting at. And then in the front, 
I've got my iPad, I've got my writing pad, I've got some medical stuff in here, you know, the usual. And then I've got um, in the front, this is really cool, this pocket here was specifically designed for EDC. So if you're not going to be carrying your sidearm here, you can actually carry it here in a trigger guard with a trigger guard holster and it actually has a little thing that actually laces up to the trigger guard holster. So you've always got your blaster easily accessible in a pocket, and that's a Glock 17 by the way, in a pocket that that holds your gun and once again there's none of this that screams gun, right? Um, the, the reason I stopped carrying this bag for a while was because it was a tactical looking bag. Yeah, it's got molly on the side, so at least it isn't completely covered in molly. It's got molly on the side. But I stopped carrying it because it had that tactical look to it, and I really don't want tactical in my day-to-day -day life. But then I started looking around me, and even my wife was like, Honey, that dude clearly is not tactical. And look at the bag he's got. Tactical bags are the norm. Why? Because Amazon, the crap show that is Amazon, is so busy pushing all the airsoft trash that everybody's buying the $40 backpacks. Guys, this is a 250 something on dollar bag if you can find it. So I said, screw it, I, I can't find this bag anymore. anymore. So yeah, I'm gonna start using it. Look, I so badly wanted to go back to this bag that I even thought about getting fabric dye and spraying it down and turning it black or dark green or any color other than shoot me first. But the fact is, I kept seeing this color everywhere I looked. Everyone's carrying this type of thing. So, I went back to this bag. Here's the other very cool thing that it does. On the inside, Shazam! I got my chest rig. Now this is a rig that you guys have seen before. This is the chest rig that I designed probably six or seven years ago. This is the only one in existence. I designed it with a guy who's very renowned in the industry for making this kind of thing. He kind of went off the deep end on me and frankly tried to screw me. Um, he tried to steal this design, call it his own, violate our non-disclosure agreement. I have the chain of emails to prove this guy's and I'm, I'm trying to be a gentleman and not expose his name because he's really well known in the industry. That's not what this video is about. This in conjunction with this is my go-to because as much as I like my rifle, I realized that I needed to have capability that was with me at all times and not just capability that was, it, it, as much as I like this, this is not something that I can move from this point to that point with on my feet. I can with this. Everything fits in this bag. And when this and this is out of this bag, this bag becomes really light and really thin. Also, you know, with the compression straps, I can get it in even tighter. But the point is, this bag suddenly becomes extremely manageable for load. And now I have the ability to add extra water, extra food if I need to. I have um, um, uh, water filtration that's in here. I have uh, food just basic, very basic things that are in here and basic energy things like uh, seeds, uh, nuts, grains, uh, uh, energy dense food that can keep you going but it's very, very lightweight. And so with this setup, in fact, um, how's that go? Yeah. There's actually a procedure to this, guys. It is chest rig, bag, and then weapon. And the reason for that is, if I need to get to the bag, I go out of the weapon, and the bag comes off, the chest rig stays put. If I need to get to the chest rig, that means that I'm injured, so everything's going to have to come off. But the point is, at any given moment, I can keep the weapon in place on my neck, get into the bag, bring it around, get into the bag, get what I need, put the bag back on, and then back into the weapon, and the weapon with safety on simply hovers at the side. It really does. It just stays right there all day long. And I've spent days wearing this. I've actually gone to rifle classes with this, with this and or the Recover 2020. This is an SBR, the Recover 2020 is not. Um, and by the way, guys, when you come to train with me for PDW classes, I actually have a bunch of Recover 2020s that I can loan you guys. So all you have to do is bring your blaster with an RMR on it, and boom, you're good to go. So, um, 
this is the setup that I would advise you to bring to, to a PDW class to, to run this stuff, to learn how, you know, how your stuff works. But yeah, this setup for me, uh, getting back to the whole point of this, this setup for me is I have gone full circle on this stuff about three times. I've gone, you know, rifle, and then, oh, but the logistics of rifle in that social breakdown, there is about a 72 hour window, maybe, honestly, maybe even, maybe into like four days, where it just, it's gonna take a while. It's, it's gonna take a while for things to get to the point where they're so ugly that the weapons have to start coming out. And society has now had a look at what crazy looks like because of the things that have happened with COVID and the absolute douchebaggery that we have seen from our own police officers following orders that are unconstitutional and pressing mandates on the populace. And those are videos for another day and I've already been doing those videos. But the point is for us to get to the point where even that becomes a citizen against everybody else uh, um, uh, image is something that's going to take a little bit of time. So in that time period, if you're seen with exposed weapons, you're going to lose that weapon. You're going to lose that weapon real quick. If you're the guy who, when the lights go out, he's like, BAM! Rifle's out! You're going to lose that rifle. Instantly, you're going to lose it. Which, by the way, leads me back to something that I have said before, and I will repeatedly say this. The reason this setup does not have a light on it. If it could have a light on it, sure, I'd put a light on it, but I can't because this is the safety for this weapon. This does not have a holster like the Recover 2020 does. So I have to sacrifice the light rail for a safety. But when you've done a lot of night training, and I've done a bunch of night training, you realize, well, actually, let me put that, let me add an extra layer to that. Sim munitions and or, or just airsoft. Um, here, great example. Those of you that are the Milsim guys, understand this, the second you pop on a light, what does that light say? Shoot me right here. And I have two lights, one here, one here. Plus I have a light on my belt and I think that's it for this setup. Um, oh, actually I have lights in the bag too. So I have lights. Yeah, I also have a headlight, a headlamp that I actually just wear around my neck um, for like when I do night training, I wear a light around my neck. So when you're talking to the instructor, there's light between everyone and everyone can see everybody's hands. But um, light is a big deal. Light discipline is a big deal. And lights say, shoot me here. So think about that. Um, that's kind of the answer. Uh, guys, I get questions from time to time and I have to figure out how best to answer those questions without completely giving you guys the whole enchilada. Otherwise, um, but this is what I do. I love sharing this knowledge with you guys. And um, guys, you need to be coming out and training. Um, I'm going to be offering PDW uh, intensive classes. They're going to be PDW classes for one day, whether it's a, a setup like this, a Recover 2020, uh, an Evo Scorpion. I don't care what it is. If it's a pistol caliber, whatever, bring it out. And we'll run some drills, and you'll have a lot of fun, and you'll learn a lot about yourself and your setup. And we'll also head up into the woods and do the Overland course, which is what I'm getting ready to do, which is why I put all this crap on. So that's in the next video. And if I'm nice, I'll actually tag it to this video. As always, I thank you guys for watching. God bless you all. Get those guns out in practice. Have a good one. Time to shoot.